recording here so that I have it. Um, so what this is for is, uh, so I use these uh, recorded videos for future semesters. I think uh, in one of my welcome messages I linked to, to from uh, physics force orientation session last spring and um, that's where they come from. I edit these and as I'm editing them I find it's uh, useful to have a recording of myself all the time and Zoom doesn't do a great job of doing that. So this is what my backup recording is for. So you will see me turn this on at the beginning of every session and I'm gonna hide it away after having turned it on. So, um, so let me put uh, what I'm going to be calling my usual welcome message in the chat and then I will go through a, a bit of a um, kind of explanation of my setup uh, so that if I do something weird do you <laughs> at least don't know where it's coming from and uh, and do a quick intro of myself. So people who are here in real time, the first few minutes uh, we were just doing that uh, but for people who are joining by recording the video, um, I just want you to at least record my own intro. So let me um, so let me drag this chat window into my shared screen. So please don't send any private messages now, but uh, I will explain in a little bit how this is going to be used. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining in this uh, virtual class session. Oh, wait, that's not right. <laughs> in this uh, online orientation session. Orientation session. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask or put your question into the chat window. So a brief-ish explanation of my setup. I have a two-screen setup. So you should be seeing a shared screen here and you should also see my chat window because my Zoom setting is set up in a way where when I share my screen you see my Zoom, uh, Zoom windows. And in the second window is where I keep all my other stuff, where my, I keep the Zoom window with the people's names, videos, reactions, and the participants and other things. So most of the times you will see, um, you will not see this chat window on this screen because it'll be on my second screen where I can glance at it from time to time and, and notice if there's anything new there. And um, just so, I think by now people are familiar with how video conferences work. When it looks like I'm looking at you, I'm actually not. I'm looking at this camcorder that I'm using for uh, my video. <laughs> um, so I've trained myself to look at the camcorder when I want to look like I'm speaking to someone directly, but um, just know that uh, it's when I'm looking over here that I'm actually looking at people who are here in real time. So you will see me glance now and then over to the side so that I can make sure that I'm addressing any concerns, questions that might have come up. Now, one of the um, not so ideal thing you will see in this session is you will see me speak almost nonstop. Uh, you won't see me uh, pause for long for questions, comments. <laughs> um, and I guess the short explanation of that is I've tried it, but in the online setting, it didn't quite work out. So in a, when you see me in person, in lab, you will see me able to hold up quite a long silence. Uh, that's one of the first things that they teach you when they first teach you how to teach, that you have to know how to make use of awkward silences. But I think the psychology of that just doesn't work out well in the online setting. I'm the only, well, not right now, not, but most of the time I'm the only one on camera and when I stop speaking and there's silence, other people usually don't look like they feel uncomfortable with that. So I've decided to go with a, uh, another convention um, that's more common in the broadcasting world. So um, I've decided to go with a convention where what I'm trying to do is minimize dead air, minimize time of silence while we are broadcasting or at least recording. So uh, that's why you will see me, hear me speak almost nonstop. And I do really want to mention, make sure that it's not misunderstood, that when I say, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, I really do mean that. Um, so uh, I know sometimes people feel uncomfortable just interrupting, <laughs> but that's uh, the only way you will get any word in edgewise. So you, if you, I said something that doesn't make sense, and if it looks like I'm gonna move on and you don't want me to, just unmute yourself and ask. Don't worry about interrupting because uh, that's, I'm not gonna be pausing for <laughs> questions, comments, uh, for the reason that it hasn't really worked. But what I'm 
what I'm telling you is you have plenary permission to omit yourself and ask uh, whenever you want. <laughs> And sometimes, you know, even with this, uh, if you don't feel comfortable just uh, unmuting yourself and asking, you can always put your question into chat. Uh, and this actually works two ways. So if you send it to everyone, it'll get captured in the recording, and that's perfectly fine so that everyone can see that there's a question, and hopefully I've addressed it in a timely manner. Somehow, if you have a question that you don't feel comfortable asking uh, in a way that everyone, even people who are not here, are able to see, then you can send it to me as a private message. Not now, but <laughs> once I've moved this off, you can do that, and uh, I'll be able to see it on my second screen and be able to address that. Um, so, you know, chat messages, they are not interrupting anything. I will see it, and I'll find the right time to address them. So. It's another way you can ask a question because, again, you won't see me pause for questions and comments uh, for the reasons I've just explained. So with that explanation of my setup, uh, let me just uh, work my way down the agenda. I might uh, change the order of some of these things. but um, So I every time we have, so we are going to have almost weekly um, online sessions like this. After this first one, I'm going to call them virtual class session. Technically, they are my office hour. And, uh, um, and, uh, and we do all of those sessions you will see on agenda posted. And uh, one of the functions of the agenda is for me to make sure that I touch on everything that I thought I should touch on. So that's what this is for. Um, so I guess let's just start with the introduction. Um, so uh, my name is Andrew Park. I'm your instructor for Physics 4C. So we did a little intro uh, before we started the recording for people who are here in real time, I guess to just repeat just a couple main points. Uh, well, I'm your instructor, that's one. <laughs> Two, I've been teaching this class for a while. So you will see a lot of materials that are from a few years um, from a few years ago when I was teaching this class before. And some of the materials from when I was teaching this class in person, 100% um, in person, and I was recording my class for a different reason that just worked out when we needed online videos for online class. And uh, we've been teaching uh, this class online at College of Alameda actually since before COVID-19. And, um, and there are some certain challenges with uh, the 100% online lecture. Uh, and I do think the in-person lab really helps out a lot with some of the things that are lacking in 100% online lecture. The, uh, the biggest thing, thing that's lacking is it tends to put a lot of burden on you as a student because, um, yeah, I think that's enough to say. So with that, let me just uh, show you a couple um, beginning of semester notes. It's actually summarized in the announcement that I posted as the very first announcement because, you know, that's why it's in there because it's important. Uh, it goes to making sure the lines of communication are open. Um, so my first backup method to reach out to you is through email. So I want to really make sure that, you know, if you got as far as somehow watching this, um, participating in this uh, online orientation session or watching this recorded video, I want to make sure I can reach you by email. So uh, if you, I think uh, for most people, the, your preferred email address is Peralta email address. And I think for most people, Peralta email address is not your main email address. So, so what I want you to do is follow these instructions to make sure that forwarding is a setup so that you, um, so that your Peralta email is forwarded to where you actually check your email regularly. So let me do this. I think uh, I can use this link to log in as faculty. It's, uh, thing, oh. Yeah, it recognizes I'm already logged in. So there's a login screen that you would normally go through. Go through that, go to apps, Outlook. Hopefully there's nothing um, confidential in my email inbox. If there is, look away. <laughs> Maybe there is. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Let me just go to this gear icon. That's where the settings are, forwarding. Um, 
And when I uh, edit this video, I will blur things out. But on Zoom recording, I can't blur things out. So uh, when you go to forwarding, you can enable forwarding and set forwarding to whatever address you use and keep a copy uh, if that somehow uh, makes you feel secure. <laughs> so this is my own setting. And that's what I would recommend for everyone. I do check my web email from time to time, but not that often. Not as often as I check my uh, this is actually goes to Gmail, <laughs> not as often as I check my Gmail. So, that, so that's the number one. And I've said um, email is my first backup communication method. So my uh, regular communication method is actually through Canvas. It's uh, just a way of um, organizing material because you use your email for things other than this course. And same with me. If I do all my class communications through email, it might get lost. So. All the class matters, I will probably write to you using Canvas conversation tool. So in order to make sure that Canvas messages reach you, the same way emails would reach you, you have to set your notifications setting the right way, the way I would recommend. So you can get to notification setting through this link. That's perfectly possible, or you can, oh wait, I didn't have to scroll up, or you can also go to it by clicking on your profile picture and then notifications. Let me middle click so that it opens it in a different tab. So here you will see my notification setting. Uh, you can set notification for each course that's possible. I just set an account level setting and just to deal with that. And as you can see here, my own notification preference is Practically for everything, notify immediately because I figure if anything starts to bug me, I can always turn it down. But if uh, there's no notification, then I might not know what I'm missing. So now, if you want to set it up that way, great. I don't object. But you got other things. Maybe you don't want to go to the trouble of turning it down later. Then I would like to ask you to set at least these four things as notify immediately. The first is conversations, and I believe it's the conversation message. So this is uh, the setting that would control how and when you are notified when I send you a Canvas message. So I would ask you to set this as notify immediately so that you are notified <laughs> whenever I send you a Canvas message. Um, the second thing that I would ask you to set as notify immediately is the class announcement. announcement. And I've seen recommendations where sometimes people recommend to turn it down. And I guess if you really feel like you have to, you can. I have no way to prevent you from doing that. But I recommend to notify immediately. For example, if you set this as a daily summary, then um, there's a slow, potentially 24-hour delay in when you get those notifications. So, for example, this announcement was posted at 7 a.m. this morning. You would not get a notification about this until an hour from now. So that's what daily summary will do to you. Now, most often, I, I won't um, announce things with less than 24 hours notice, like this uh, um, orientation time. I think I talked about this in a different message earlier. So. Uh, so I try to avoid sending anything with less than 24 hours notice, but, um, but you know, why create the delay if that's not necessary? So please, set it as notify immediately. You will see me not uh, post uh, maybe one announcement, at most uh, one announcement a day, but more likely one an announcement per week. I, you got other things, I don't want to spam your inbox. So that's the second thing. The third thing that I would recommend that you set as notify immediately, it's one that's hard to guess. It's a submission comment. It actually took me a bit of time before I figured out that this was necessary. Because uh, this goes to, again, organizing communication. When I'm grading things that needs manual grading, I like to leave it as comment on the assignment item uh, so that uh, when you're looking at it, it's clear what I'm referring to. And um, and I only figured out from talking to someone who's never gotten any of those submission comments that you have to enable this setting. Uh, you have to make sure that this is either notified immediately or some level of setting so that when I leave comments as I grade that you don't um, never see it. So um, because sometimes the comments will relate to the things that you need to do differently in order to stop losing points or whatever. 
So, um, so that's the third thing. And I think that's all three things I mentioned here. There's a fourth thing that I would really like to you to set as notify immediately. And what that is, it's the, in the discussions. Particularly under new topic, I would like you to set it as some level of notification. And really the, well, I guess I got two reasons. Um, one is, so the way the discussion is set up in this class, you should be able to just create a new topic. So when I go to discussions as an instructor, I see that I can create a new discussion, and you should see this button as well, because the setting I have is that everyone can create their own discussion topics. So, and the, the people kind of starting discussion topic and, um, <laughs> and uh, using this as a forum, it only really works if, uh, uh, if everyone has this kind of notification enabled, so that when there's a new topic, people see that there's a new topic. That's one. And two, uh, so recordings like this one, orientation session and virtual class sessions later, I'm going to use the discussions to post recordings here. I've tried other methods before, posting as an announcement, and the organization for announcements never really worked out because it so got cluttered up with all the other announcements that I couldn't pick out which ones were uh, recording posts. So I'm going to po be posting recordings here. And uh, for the first couple of weeks, I'll post a separate announcement telling you, hey, there's the recording, go take a look at it. But after that, uh, you will have to, I'm, not, I'm gonna stop doing it. So you will need this uh, new topic discussions notification setting in order to continue getting that notification. So those four settings, I would really like to ask you to consider setting them as notify immediately. And uh, you know what I would recommend is do what I do. Set everything as notify immediately. And then if some things will start to bug you, then turn it down as a summary or something. Like I used to set submissions as notify immediately. Then I figured out, oh, I'm getting notification like all the time. And I don't want that. So I turned it down to a daily summary. But for late submissions, I still get notification immediately so that I know when people are catching up with their any late coursework. So I think those are the two important points that I've had this announcement and I have it on in video form in case I get questions about them. So um, cover there. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Just checking to see if there are questions. Good, thank you. Um, so that's the first uh, agenda item. And I want to spend most of the time here um, talking about going through a course demo as a test student. I have deliberately not done anything as test student so that I can show that. But uh, let me just uh, handle a couple items before I do that because this is basically going to take uh, the remainder of the time. I don't want, I want to make sure that I don't forget about this too. One is I want to make sure that so I pick a virtual class session time that will work for the most number of people possible. So I will also ask about this in the uh, ask about this in uh, in the lab session on Wednesday. But as an additional way to make sure that I get uh, all the possible input, uh, what I would like for people to do is uh, complete this uh, survey. I just uh, reviewed it, made sure it was um, up to date for the semester. So I'm going to publish it now. And uh, after this session is over, when I post the announcement about the recording being available, I will uh, post a link to the survey so that you can fill it out. I can kind of take a look at um, so I guess what's more quantitative is this item, because uh, uh, this is where I can kind of see how many people are checking what. But uh, you can also give a descriptive um, description here that I also do take a look at. So um, so yeah, let me um, do that. And because of this uh, particular quiz item, um, so the quiz menu item, it's disabled. You can't access this that I can as an instructor. So you won't have a view to this. And this is not linked from any of the modules because it's not part of any module. So I will post an announcement where you can see where the link to it is. There's one other place where you can find the link to it, but um, it's a place where I'm trying to discourage people from using, so I don't want to um, send the people that way because it sends a mixed message. Um, so. Yes, 
so let me leave that there, and I will ask you, ask you on Wednesday what time uh, people have preference for virtual class sessions. So uh, if you have a strong preference for a particular time, think about it and let me know on Wednesday so that I can give that first consideration. And speaking of Wednesday's in-person lab session, um, I think uh, I put this note in the syllabus. I think the main thing is it's a... Uh, um, it's at Science Annex, and where Science Annex is, is at this street address, A6 Atlantic Avenue. If you've never been here, we are a couple blocks from the main campus. Uh, make sure you're not going to the main campus. Put this in your GPS, and uh, we have a big parking lot right outside the building. So as long as you come near here, you should be fine. Um, and uh, just so that you have some sense of what we do in the lab um, for the first lab meeting. For the first meeting, we won't be doing much. It's just an introduction. There's nothing you are turning in. There's no physics activity you are doing. But it is still required. And mainly so that I can see that everyone enrolled in the class can make two lab sessions in person. And if uh, someone's not there, and I don't know why, I'll be reaching out to you to make sure everything's square. Um, and then uh, the next week's lab is where there will be actual real lab where you turn things in. But uh, please be plan, uh, plan to be there uh, this Wednesday so that I don't freak out of uh, some, uh, having to drop someone. <laughs> I really don't want to drop anyone. Um, so... So yeah, with that, I think uh, I covered everything that I need to cover other than the course demo. So I will use the remainder of time just to doing the course demo. If there are any questions, concerns, people have, let me do course demo. Um, you can, if you remember something, you can put it in the chat. Um, so I'm going to go into test student view um, so that uh, I can go through uh, this course as you would and explain some of the quirks uh, of, not quirks, some of the, uh, not even oddities, uh, the way the course is set up that I've seen confuses people in the past. So um, so this is how the course is set up. Um, you see the announcement, the most recent one anyway. It's a set up so that it shows the, the very last announcement I've posted. And um, so... Do take a look at it if you haven't. Um, but be aware that there may be, if you haven't been to the course homepage in a while, there might be additional announcements that you haven't seen. So uh, just to be aware of that. And on this course homepage, one thing that I want to point to and um, make sure that you know it's been source of confusion in the past is this to-do list of things. If I could disable it, I would. The same way I disabled assignments, quiz link, and those other things, I would disable this if I could. But I can't, <laughs> so it remains there. And uh, let me briefly explain why I would want to disable it if I could. So in terms of, um, there's one thing in which this is useful. It's useful for tracking announcements because it shows all the announcements that you haven't yet seen. So, you know, you can take a look at the announcement, you can kind of track it, click X to get rid of it after you've seen it. For that, great, use it that way. I have no problem with that. The place where I have issue with how this to-do list works is basically everything else. People see assignments listed here, and you and actually the survey that I just posted is there too. And you think you can click on this link and start working on course. Yeah, it doesn't work that way because um, because there's something I use called module prerequisites. So to do list it presents you with the links that's misleading because it might be something that you can't access it yet. So I get requests like uh, from people, could you please unlock this for me? Oops, that's not what I meant to click. Uh, requests from people say, uh, could you please unlock this for me? And um, and there's nothing for me to unlock. It's for you to unlock. And all that kind of confusion, if this to do this doesn't exist, I think I would be getting far fewer requests of that type. Um, so so I really, 
recommend you not to use to do. And really the biggest reason is, as you kind of saw it, so in my instructor view, I don't see the same list of to-dos you do. I see the list of things for me to do. I see the list of things that I need to create. So because I don't see what you see, or whatever you see on your to-do list, it's not something I'm even thinking about. So there's a, that big gap there. So that's why I don't really want you to use this. But because it's there, um, I can get rid of it. Like the most I can do is tell you. Please don't use it. And for this one thing that you might use to access, I will just post the link elsewhere so that you never have to think about the, uh, the to-do list. So the, uh, rather than click on these, these links, uh, what you should be doing is clicking on start here if you are here for the first time. Clicking on that will lead you to the very first uh, module page in Canvas modules, which you should be able to access. And I think you, you might have probably seen this. This is a template material. So I've fixed some things like broken mail to links. But <laughs> other than that, it's mostly the template material. So if you feel like you've seen all these and you want to just skip ahead, that's fine. No problem. Oh, but before you skip ahead, this is the kind of the explanation for some of the error messages that you might have seen. Uh, so this course you use, makes a heavy use of module requirements. So whenever you try to skip using the to-do links, you will see these messages. And um, what I tell you is that it has, uh, when you look at the error message about it hasn't been unlocked yet, the agent for that sentence is it hasn't been unlocked yet by you. Because uh, I, I didn't lock anything. I usually don't use any date-based locking for this class. So uh, you have to complete certain tasks in order to access your uh, module items. So, um, so yeah, so let me just uh, keep clicking next so that I can get through this. And I do recommend that you read through this and, you know, actually don't do what I'm doing now. <laughs> but what I'm doing now, you know, it can be done. And I will explain in a little bit um, when you can't do this anymore and what the distinctions are. And I think for the seven people who have already done the Honor Code Pledge and the, the intro discussion, I think you've already seen all this. Great good work. <laughs> Let me just uh, keep going here to um, run into a wall uh, at some point. So what I'm doing now, as you can see the test the student to doing, you can do, but at some point, it'll stop working. And um, so this is where, so the way the course is designed to be viewed, it's designed to be viewed through modules of you. This is how I want you to see the course. You can see both the things that you have to do immediately at next and the things that you have to, that's coming up in the future. So you can see all the pages that I clicked through um, in this module, the orientation item, Getting started item, view the view the app. So this is where the module requirements have changed. It went from viewed, and view just means your web browser has loaded a page. Like, okay, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, it could be something like what I just did, just clicking through. And the module requirement for this is now no longer view, but meeting certain requirements. So for the next two items, this is how I take attendance for the online section, the honor code pledge and the intro discussion. For these two, you will have to do some, take some action that's more than just loading the page. And after you complete this, then you will unlock with one module and you can start working through those. So, um, so let me complete these two in a bit. I just don't want to dwell slightly on this page that I kind of clicked through, uh, which is to explain something that I'm doing um, for this class. It's uh, not as much of an experiment as it was last fall. And I think I'm reasonably satisfied with how it worked out. So I'm continuing to do it. Uh, for people who are in my physics uh, 4B, you have some sense of how that worked. Um, and <laughs> Um, if you feel like it didn't work as well for you, just talk to me. We'll make sure that it'll work well. Um, so what it is, is I guess, um, so you can read all this. I won't just read it out loud. Um, I, 
I think uh, ideally what grading should be in a physics class, especially physics for majors class like this one, it should simply reflect your understanding of physics. Uh, and I think uh, what people's focus should be is understanding the course material. And if you understand the course material very well, then you will get an A. If you understand it for some of the part, but you know you have some big gaps here and there, then you should get a B. Uh, if you are struggling through the course, you come to every lab, then you should at least pass, so you should get a C. And um, so because we don't do pluses and minuses, you know, there's no A minus, there's no B plus, um, the kind of the chunks of the grades are kind of discrete. And I think uh, your uh, worries, uh, your uh, attention, your uh, things that you care about, it should really be about the course content. And every semester, um, I get more questions about grades than physics. And this is really my attempt to try to change that. And um, at least for the first couple of weeks, I might still get more questions about grades than physics. But I hope as you work through, you will get better sense that um, uh, if you understand physics well, then you'll get grades and vice versa. And so, so this page is the bit of a brief explanation of the thing that's going to be um, um, that what I will do. And it's not really a complete view of everything. It describes some main pieces. And I think to get the good sense of um, how the grades will be assigned, you really need a further description of this. And uh, let me show you that uh, using instructor view. So this is uh, one of the items that you will eventually get to in um, uh, in five weeks, <laughs> yeah. For this class, it's a kind of a long because we want to cover all the optics material and you will have timed assessment. And along with the timed assessment, you will have the first report where um, it's a kind of in conjunction with, with the new grading um, system. So here you will, um, so it really goes in the chronological order, you should go the other way. You should be considering this part first and then have a summary evaluation. But in this item is where you will um, give yourself a grade. You will grade yourself as A, B, or C. And uh, I'll take a look at it along with the evidences that you include. A part of which, you, so this is where the points go. Point, uh, the items you complete, they indicate, you know, completion and effort, and you uh, should feel free to cite those. Um, and there's also timed assessments that, in terms of um, grade weight, it's 0%, but it's still required, and um, multiple choices graded automatically, and free form, I will eventually grade it, and, uh, and I'll make some model answers available for you to evaluate yourself. Um, so there's that. And there's also uh, subjective criteria in the sense that when you look at the grading rubric for A, B, and C, you will see that really a big part of that goes to how well you feel you understood the topics in the class. So, um, so there should be some room for giving a subjective reasoning process. Um, so... So this is something that's uh, coming up. It's you know due in March. <laughs> so so it, it, it'll, it'll be a while, but I'm uh, making sure that I display it as part of this recorded session so that until we get there, you can at least see what's coming down the line and where you can get some sense of how well you are doing in class. And um, yeah, so, so that's uh, kind of what's coming down the line. And so, my biggest failing is that I'm a little bit of a slow grader <laughs> and I'm trying to do better. I'll try to be on time with the grading this semester. Um, uh, but um, um, where, where are you going with this? Um, I think uh, what I was trying to say is that it worked out reasonably okay with the physics 4A and 4B last semester. So I have hopes that this will continue to work well for physics of 4C this semester. And um, if there are any concerns, I guess, uh, um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask now on recording. And also we can talk after the first lab. Um, there's, um, you don't do a lot in the first lab, so there'll be plenty of time left for, to address any questions or, um, or just to chat.
So I'm going to start with the, the other code pledge. So this is the really the only um, item in which you will see me do what you see me do here, uh, which is that so it goes to the online course other code, which hopefully you didn't do what I did with test student. You actually stayed on this page for a while and read through it. And this is very important. And I want to make sure people read through it. And that's what the purpose of this quiz is for. And instead of asking you questions about it, because sometimes that doesn't mean anything, I'm just going to have you type out this block of text so that I know that <laughs> it's made it through your brain somehow. Um, and the one thing that I'll point out is sometimes people do this wrong. They will just say, uh, their, type out their name. Uh, but that's not what I asked. What I asked is please type below the indented text. Please type this text, replacing the name with your own name. And make sure you are typing it, not copying and pasting. So let me do this properly, the way it should be done as test students, so that for people you know who persistently don't this, do this correctly, I can send them the link to the video and say, hey, this is how you're supposed to do it, and tell them to do it that way. So let me type it up. I test student two will make some missions that represent my own work, not share my own work and sub solution. By the way, you don't actually um, have to correct the typos because um, it's manually graded. It's not a typing test. I'm just correcting it because I hate leaving typos in my typed work. So not use outside resources during open book and assessments not engage in any other activities that dishonestly improve my results or dishonestly damage or improve the results of others. Oh. And you know if you don't have any typos you don't have to introduce any Again, it's not. <laughs> so this gets uh, on my honor. This gets uh, manually reviewed, and I do check for if uh, people actually typed it. Um, and yeah, so uh, so so that manual review um, it'll come later. Um, for people who submit it today, I'll try to review at least the ones tomorrow morning. Um, and yeah. And uh, it's really this question that's the mechanism to allow you to progress while I'm still grading it. This gives you two points. So, you know, answer yes here, don't answer no. Um, and uh, the next module, so that fulfills this module requirement, score at least 1.9 points. And um, that is also the mechanism where if people don't do this correctly, I can bring you back. I can zero out your score and make you do this correctly before you can uh, continue to move on to the remainder of the class. So, yeah. And uh, there's a b huge range of time. So I'm a fairly fast typist. If I'm doing this super quickly, I can do it in like a minute and a half. And I've seen something as long as 10 minutes because uh, people are doing it on their phone or whatever. But um, just make sure you type it through so that you so that I can see that you've at least read this text in some way. Because um, the uh, one of the things I will say is so you know academic honesty is a big deal to me. It, it's a, and it's especially big deal in an online class because I feel like um, it's an issue that I've never really had to deal with in an in-person only class. Not that, you know, I mean, people do try to cheat on the exams or whatever in an in-person class, but I have never had some pe someone who, you know, who enters a class with basically no intention of doing any physics work. But uh, with 100% online lectures, I've seen people do that based on what I get from talking with them in lab and kind of the huge discrepancy between quality of their written work, which is excellent, and their level of knowledge of physics, which is terrible. I, I have no other, nothing else to conclude than that they basically did nothing to learn anything in the class. And, and that's a constant concern. And uh, I will point out some of the things in this class as an anti-cheating measure. And when I say that, that's what I'm referring to. I have this hypothetical student in mind who is entering this class with the intention of doing zero work and maybe have arranged for some friend or 
friend or a paid tutor to do their own work for them. And one of the design goal for this class is for someone who's doing that, um, you, will, you will not get an A. You will not get a B. Um, and it, 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 that's one area where the in-person lab session is really um, uh, necessary because that's the only setting where I have a reasonable assurance that the work I see is yours, I, the kind of the level of understanding of physics that I see is yours. So, okay, so let me do the, this intro here. Uh, it, this one has contribute requirement and contribute requirement is such a strict requirement that me uh, with the instructor access, um, I have no way of clearing those requirements other than actually doing it. So let me actually do it. So for, you know, test the student timing. So let me just uh, uh, contribute something as a test the student. But let me kind of double this as my own introduction. So I'll do it as me, Andrew Park, that hypothetical test student. So hi, uh, my name is Andrew Park. Uh, whenever you see test a student in these um, graded discussions, of which there is many. I think this might be the only one. In these graded discussions, um, it's me, uh, your instructor, clearing module requirement for the test student. Um, and, uh, and I am um, teaching this class, not taking it. Uh, so let me answer the intro questions um, in a way that is appropriate for the instructor. Um, okay, what is uh, wait, so why are you taking the class? So I'll just talk about what I love about teaching the class. Uh, um, so physics 4C is, uh, is my most uh, favorite class to teach. Um, please don't tell this to your friends in physics 4A or 4B. And my apologies so for those who were in my physics for A and for B. I just like this class better. Um, because uh, this is the class uh, where we cover uh, modern physics, the revolutions in our understanding of nature that occurred in the 20th century. There's a textbook called, called um, Revolutions in 20th Century Physics. Oh, I'm forgetting the title by Griffith. Uh, he's a popular upper division physics textbook author. Um, so, uh, so I'm borrowing the language from him, Revolutions. Um, um, although I do get to touch on modern physics topics in Physics 10, which it's been a long time since I've taught it last. Uh, although I do that, um, no other class covers those topics at the depth we, we can in this uh, calculus-based uh, third semester general physics class. Okay. Uh, and I choose one or more of the following questions to answer. So I'll just answer this one. Um, I guess I'll share. So, um, my area of research for physics um, when I w was a grad student at Cal um, was uh, AMO or Atomic, Molecular, and Optical Physics. Um, this uh, is the area uh, most uh, deeply connected to basic quantum mechanics. Uh, particle physics being more concerned with the field of QFT or uh, relativistic uh, quantum mechanics, um, basic quantum mechanics. Um, and as a tool of trade, uh, we use lasers in a lot of experiments um, we do. So uh, of the top 
modern physics topics. Um, what I had most uh, interest and in experience in were, um, were optics, uh, which depending on which part of optics you're looking at might not be uh, modern. So if you say laser optics, that has to be modern physics uh, or laser optics and quantum mechanics. Uh, exact topics we cover, that's why this is my favorite uh, uh, physics class. Okay, let me post a reply. By the way, these names, uh, so when I post this um, on YouTube, <laughs> I blur the names. So I've taken some care to show the names as little as possible so that it's less work for me to blur later. Um, so, um, yeah, so I've done that. Uh, let me go out to the modules of you so that uh, we have about five minutes remaining. I want to kind of look ahead to see where we are. Um, so I've finished everything in the getting started module. So ha having done that has unlocked the week one module. Uh, it has prerequisite of getting started. And um, for the first two, two weeks, you are going to see uh, this linear progression requirement uh, where even though I unlocked the week one module, uh, you won't be able to just jump to here. You have to start here and then work your way down. Um, and then uh, week two, which has week one as module prerequisite, uh, it's the same deal. You have, once you've unlocked it, you have to start here and then work your way down. You're going to see a slight change when you get to week three. Uh, for one, you will see what Superficially, it looks like a slightly more complicated. For every week, you will see three sub-modules, which is not a thing. You will see three modules. And they are broken out this way. The first module will contain the lecture items. Um, that's what you saw above, uh, kind of interspersed within the weekly module. And um, this depends on the previous week's lecture module. So unless you finish that, you can access this. And you will see with the assignment set out on its own module and the peer review set, out, set aside on its own module. And these will um, depend, so this will depend on that and this will depend on that. And the reason for it is it's to address a certain issue I saw with uh, some people, not everyone, but enough a portion of the class, maybe about a third of the class, where some people tend to get stuck early in the semester and never move beyond those early weeks. And I, I thought, um, I looked at it and I thought it was a really terrible situation that people were in. So um, so what I'm hoping to do here is that somehow if you find yourself behind, uh, as long as you got to week three, um, you don't need to have completed the assignment to access the next week's lecture module because this only goes back to the lecture module itself. Um, I, I recommend that you do the assignment. Don't skip them if you don't have to skip them. But if you find yourself super behind, you can at least get caught up in lecture and try to pick up where you can. So, so it's a set up that way. Um, for the first two weeks, the linear progression requirement is pretty strict. So please keep up and uh, work on these early. This is still on Friday. This is still on Monday. Um, so let me just uh, work through these. Um, so for most of these modules, you will see that you can just click on next and do the thing that I was doing earlier that, again, I don't recommend that you do. But you will uh, come across this from time to time. It'll uh, stop you at some point, and it'll say you have to go back and mark this as done. Um, I want to use this as a, as a, a marker. Um, and uh, it's a marker in two senses. One is how I use it. I use it as a marker to let you know uh, which pages contain significant physics content. You can't just uh, scroll down and move on. There's lecture videos. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you should really watch through. There's textbook links that you should follow and read. The intent is that this is basically our lecture. This is our lecture for the first week. And if we had in-person lectures, we would have had four hours of lecture this week. Actually, four plus a little bit more because we have 14 week uh, session. And um, what I expect you to do is to spend that time, amount of time. Uh, maybe it doesn't have to be exactly four hours, but something that's comparable to that. Uh, reading the textbook, 
watching the lecture videos and uh, spend enough time on this. And then when you've done, then mark it as done and then move on. So that's the one way in which it's a marker. It's a marker that indicates um, indicate which pages you should kind of slow down and make sure that um, uh, you are not just skipping through the <laughs> important pages. Um, and the second is, suppose, okay, I guess this applies to people who are catching up, uh, like you've um, fallen behind and you're kind of trying to quickly move through the material and you're just uh, marking things as done that you haven't done. Um, and if we were somehow there, then mark as done, it's a toggle button. So you can mark something as done and you can unmark it as undone. So you could, um, you know, mark it as done so that you can move on and then uh, use it as a way for you yourself to track uh, what you need to finish just to make sure to unmark it so that when you have actually finished it, you can actually mark it again for yourself. So that's another way that mark as the requirement. It's really a tool. It's a tool, communication tool for me. Uh, communicating some expectation to you and it's a tool for you just to track keeping track of what you have completed it you know doesn't tie to any submission any great item um, unlike this uh, next item here where um, you actually need to submit it so um, I guess I could submit something I um, so don't do what I'm gonna do but I'm just gonna because uh, if I simply do next it won't um, let me, because that submit requirement actually blocks me from being able to access this. So <laughs> let me just submit something so that I can show you the next page. I recommend the text entry, so do that. And um, uh, I'm trying something new with this assignment. I'm making this uh, not anonymously graded. So, um, so it's a peer graded, which means three of your peers will see your submission. And in the past, that used to be anonymous. Your peers didn't know whose assignment it was they were looking at, unless you put your own name on it. And um, I just want you to try something new this semester. It's not anonymous this semester. Everyone will see everyone's name. I'm hoping that will lead to more effective uh, peer grading practice, but we'll see. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, and. Uh, Next item. So um, when you look at the problem set, uh, most of the time, you well, all the time, you'll see 10 questions. And most of the time, there's actually more than 10 questions behind the 10 questions you will see. And I want to just point out there's a huge amount of help available for you. That's in the homework help page. And um, I think that's the immediate next to module item. So, a lot of the questions you will see in your homework, especially the more difficult questions, you will probably see it worked out here. So um, now when you look at these video titles, you'll see that they use the chapter and the question numbering. And the way you can use it, I give some instructions here. Uh, this is the video that kind of explains how you can use the chapter uh, and reference to find a video that will help you on the exact question you are working on. So uh, take a look at that and uh, set aside enough time to work on the problem set. So that's really where the majority of your time will be spent. So make sure you're not trying to finish your problem set one hour before deadline. I mean, you know, if you are, there's uh, mechanisms built into the course that will make it not that big of a problem, but um, make sure, uh, just uh, expect being able, uh, having to and being able to spend hours of time on the problem set. Uh, that's uh, your big assignment each week. So um, I think that covers everything I need to in this one hour uh, orientation session. Let me just uh, make sure I didn't miss anything big. Um, course demo, honor code of pledge, great discussion. Yeah, and I think I've gotten through some of that. Um, yeah, so I guess I, yeah, <laughs> I guess I've covered everything, and I'm excited to see you all. Um, it's those of you who are joining by recording the video in the lab this Wednesday. Thank you to those of you who joined and stayed through the end. Uh, if there are any questions for, oh, uh, I think I addressed that timed assessment. <laughs> uh, so it, it's uh, our midterm replacement, but it's. Um, it's not exactly the same, but it, it gives you the midterm type questions, okay. Um, 
So with that, if there are any questions for the recording, I'm saying goodbye to the people joining by recording the video. I'll stop the recording here. And in case I'll, the people who are here in real time had any questions that they didn't want to ask on recording, I will stay online a little bit after I stop the recording. So saying goodbye to people joining by recording the video. Stop the recording. Recording stopped. Let me stop my backup recording.